Hello everybody! It's good to meet with you again. At the rate we're going, you'll be experts on menopause before you know it. We're moving right along, progressing all the time, gathering more and more momentum. At any rate, this is video number 200. <laughs> And it's part of the long unit on osteoporosis. It's the fifth osteoporosis video, and it's important to watch my videos in order. So far, I've schooled you about the definition of menopause, your bones from puberty to menopause, the incidence of, men of osteoporosis, and bone structure. Now, it's time to talk about the rate of bone loss at postmenopause. And this topic will really shock you. Hopefully, it will shock you into action to prevent bone loss altogether. I hope you realize that my goal is to help you and not to scare you. So when I present a video that you find upsetting, it's probably because it tells you something you don't want to hear. But I think that's because you'd prefer a simple lie to a complex truth. Most people do. But I refuse to tell you simple lies just to make you feel good. I will always tell you the truth. And that's because it's my job to save your life. So this video is one more step in that direction. If you have my book, and it's a good thing to have, this material is in chapter 29 under the heading Rate of Loss, regardless of whether you have the first edition or the second edition. Same chapter, same heading, Rate of Loss. If you aren't absolutely sure about the rate of bone loss that occurs at postmenopause, you definitely need to watch this video. Most women are shocked to discover the facts. To begin, Let's reflect back on the video tutorial I gave you just a few weeks ago. It was video 197 on your bones from puberty to menopause. And I explained how interconnected puberty and menopause are to your bone growth and bone loss. You might remember this. It's a conveyor belt that depicts puberty at the front end and menopause at the back end. At puberty, you have a growth spurt. It's a sudden growth spurt, spurt, and you gain a lot of bone in a short time as evidenced by growing a few inches in just a couple of years, outgrowing all your clothes and shoes, and suddenly finding yourself taller than your mother. So this video is going to address the rate of bone loss when you become postmenopausal and explain how there's a huge difference between slow bone loss and rapid bone loss. So let's see how much you already know about the rate of bone loss at postmenopause. See if you can answer this quiz question. Which of the following is true with regard to the rate of bone loss at postmenopause? A. Unlike bone growth at puberty, the rate of bone loss at postmenopause is slow and gradual with very small amounts of bone loss over a long period of time. B. Bone loss at postmenopause is erratic, somewhat like the erratic periods of perimenopause, with periods of bone loss alternating with periods of bone growth and periods of bone stability. C. Bone loss at postmenopause occurs only in the first few years of postmenopause. After that, it stabilizes. D. Bone loss at postmenopause is most rapid in the first few years of postmenopause. After that, you continue to lose bone, but at a slower rate. E. Bone loss at postmenopause is delayed. It begins five years after the beginning of postmenopause and continues steadily thereafter. F. Bone loss at postmenopause starts out at a slow rate and speeds up over time. G. Bone loss at postmenopause is dependent on race. 
Mongoloid or Asian women lose bone more quickly than women of other races. H is A and G above. I is B and G above. J is C and G above. K is D and G above. L is E and G above. And M is F and G above. Was that difficult? Did you feel certain of your answer or are you a bit unsure? You see, something like this could very well make the difference between getting osteoporosis or avoiding osteoporosis. Just knowing the rate of bone loss at postmenopause, even if you knew nothing else, could enable you to prevent a fracture of your hip or your spine. So here's the quiz question again with the correct answer in bold. Okay, so now you know that bone loss at postmenopause is most rapid in the first few years of postmenopause. And after that, you continue to lose bone, but at a slower rate. So let's be more specific about the rate of bone loss. Going back to our comparison of what happens at puberty and what happens at postmenopause, you already know that bone growth at puberty is rapid over about two to three years. And it's due to a rapid influx of estrogen. As soon as estrogen makes its appearance, your bones start growing like weeds. They get bigger and thicker and more dense. Do you think the bone loss at postmenopause is just as rapid? You bet it is, and it makes perfect sense. Your estrogen disappears fairly suddenly at menopause. And when it does, your bone starts disappearing too. In the first five years of postmenopause, you lose 2% of your bone each year. Let's see, five years times 2% each year. That's 10% of your bone gone in just the first five years of postmenopause. And after that, you lose 1% of your bone each year for the rest of your life. If you live another 50 years, you're gonna lose a whole lot of bone. By the age of 80, most women have lost more than 30% of their bone. That's why the incidence of osteoporosis increases with age. At 50 years of age, the, the prevalence of, in, of osteoporosis is only about 4%, but by 80 years of age, it's well over 52%. Now, in the last video, you learned that you have two types of bone. You have cortical bone, which is hard, dense, and strong, and it comprises the long bones of your arms and legs and ribs, as well as the flat bones of your skull and pelvic girdle. And you have trabecular bone, which is soft, porous, less dense, and weak. And it comprises the round bones of your spine, hip, and wrist. So the next thing to address is whether these two types of bone undergo bone loss at the same rate when your estrogen disappears. Now this is very important because it has to do with how much bone is present in the first place. With cortical bone, there is more bone present in the first place. So bone loss of cortical bone at any rate, will have less of an effect on it. With trabecular bone, there is less bone present in the first place. So bone loss of trabecular bone, at any rate, will have more of an effect on it. Well, it turns out that the rates of loss of these two different types of bone are quite different. Now you would hope that the rate of loss of trabecular bone would be slower. If it were, your spine, hip, and wrist would get a break. That was bad, that was a bad choice of words. <laughs> what I meant to say is that your spine, hip, and wrist would have a bit of an advantage. <laughs> but alas, 
Mother Nature has not designed things that way. Instead, the rate of bone loss is more rapid for your poor, soft, porous, weak, non-dense trabecular bone. You lose trabecular bone three times faster than you lose cortical bone. What this means is that fractures of the spine, hip, and wrist are very common in the early years of postmenopause. So what about premature menopause? What if you become postmenopausal at age 30? Do you think it's different for a young woman when she loses her estrogen prematurely? No, it's no different. This is why I go bonkers when young, prematurely postmenopausal women have no education about the effects of their early postmenopause on the rest of their lives. They are in grave danger of becoming cripples at an early age. They begin to lose bone at a rapid rate at a very young age, and they continue to lose bone every year for the rest of their lives. Do you see why this is so important? You can hardly afford to lose bone at the age of 50. There's no way things are going to turn out well if you start losing it before then. All right, let's look at another scenario. What if you take HRT for a few years and then stop it? What do you think will happen in that instance? Do you think that taking HRT for a few years will ward off this tendency to lose bone upon losing estrogen? Or do you think it simply serves to delay the onset of bone loss? Once again, Mother Nature is consistent. She may not be as kind as we wish, but she is consistent. When or if you stop HRT, you will lose bone at the same rate as if you just become postmenopausal. In other words, in the first five years after stopping HRT, you will lose 2% of your bone each year, and then you will lose 1% of your bone every year after that. In fact, some women lose as much as 3 to 6% of their bone in the very first year after stopping HRT. The term for this is catch-up loss. And that's because the HRT was the only thing preventing the bone loss. What this means is that HRT prevents osteoporosis only while you are taking it. It does not offer any long-term benefits. Do not assume that you can take HRT for a few years, stop it, and still get any benefit in terms of preventing osteoporosis. Sometimes people like to make up their own rules. Well, they're really fantasies, but I hear them all the time. They decide that deferring bone loss in terms of time will defer bone loss, period. It doesn't work that way. If you try to make it work that way, you will have to find a way to explain your broken hip or spine. <laughs> so here's what you've learned in this video. When you lose your estrogen, Bone loss is rapid in the first five years of postmenopause. You lose 2% of your bone per year in those first five years. After the first five years, you lose 1% of your bone per year for the rest of your life. This is true regardless of your age at postmenopause. This is also true if you stop taking HRT and loss of trabecular bone in your spine, hip, and wrist is more rapid than loss of cortical bone elsewhere. So now you understand why knowing the rate of bone loss at postmenopause is so, so important. You have to act on this early in order to prevent it. Unfortunately, it is not at all uncommon for women to spend the first five years of postmenopause in a state of cluelessness as to what's even going on with them. They have up to 22 signs or symptoms of menopause that make them miserable, and they fail to realize that they are all due to menopause. So if they can't figure out something as obvious as the symptoms of menopause, 
they certainly aren't going to know that they're losing both. And even if they do recognize their situation as menopause, most are either in denial or consumed with fear to such an extent that they waste the first five years doing absolutely nothing. That's the kind of thing I'm trying to change with this education. So now you're ready to learn about the symptoms of osteoporosis and that's what we're going to cover in the next video. Do you see how each video builds on the last? If you watch them in order, everything makes perfect sense. And that number after each title is what indicates the order. And that's what will empower you to make good choices for managing your menopause your way. You know that if you need my help with this or anything else, you can always schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation at menopausetaylor.me. Please subscribe to my channel. Please get everyone you know to subscribe. And follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And let's all together try to make the futures of all women better. I'll see you in a week. Bye. <laughs>